said, this ridiculous paper, really, and it's ridiculous, I'll tell you why in a sec, the authors of this paper concluded that on the basis of this information here, because so many of the patients admitted with coronary heart disease had blood cholesterol levels that were normal or below the ideal limit, that we should therefore still further lower the target LDL and prescribe more cholesterol lowering drugs to people and to more people. My word, are we joking here? Hey guys, I'm going to do a review of one of the videos of Bart K regarding cholesterol and heart disease and I'll examine the study he was talking about in this video. For those of you who don't know Bart, he's a former nutrition specialist and lecturer. He says he got bullied out of the profession for holding controversial views and you'll see some of them in this video. By the way, I'll be editing in just the relevant parts because Bart takes a lot of time to get to the point. Um, anywho, the main take of this particular study is this, and that is that these, there's 136,000 and so patients who have come in and have been diagnosed with coronary artery disease, atherosclerosis, and various complications of that. Uh, and within the first 24 hours of being hospitalized, these patients have had their blood cholesterol tested, their low density lipoprotein cholesterol, their bad cholesterol. And what we can see here is a distribution graph of the concentration in milligrams per deciliter in the blood that these patients have or had at the time that they were uh, admitted for their coronary artery disease. And what do we notice? Hmm. Okay, let's have a look at this. What we notice there is basically a normal distribution, a bell-shaped curve. Okay. So what we're saying is that LDL is a serious risk factor and the more of it you have, the more risk of coronary artery disease you are at. If that were true, then what we would see here is an increasing number or pre prevalence in the total hospitalized population for every increase of 10 milligrams per deciliter that we can see on the x-axis on the bottom there, we would see more and more and more people from left to right. Okay, it would go up and up and up. There'd be like a, either a straight line or a curvilinear relationship between the LDL cholesterol in their blood and the prevalence of CAD. We don't see that. We see a normal distribution. Now, this is a correlation. What it shows is there is no correlation between low density lipoprotein in the blood time of admission, which let's use as a loose proxy for what their LDL has been over the last period of time, so it's not going to change hugely. Um, what it shows is that the causality that we're told exists is absolutely, utterly undermined and uncoupled by this finding in this study. It's absolutely ridiculous. Look, correlations can never establish causality at all. You, you can't say if one thing is correlated to another thing then it's the cause of it. Uh, the classic example of that is that there is a strong positive relationship between the release of Nicolas Cage movies and people drowning in swimming pools. Okay. Now does that mean we need to arrest Nicolas Cage for releasing movies that cause people to drown in swimming pools? No. And it's exactly the same thing here when we're talking about a association between cholesterol and heart disease okay so a correlation cannot establish that one thing causes another thing okay but if we look for a correlation between one thing that's supposed to cause the other thing and it is not there then we do have clear reason to dismiss that causality and that's what we've got here we can dismiss this idea the observation does not meet or does not match the hypothesis, therefore the hypothesis must be rejected. Science is a discipline, that's what we ought to be doing. Okay. So that 
completely blows the idea that LDL cholesterol is bad cholesterol out the window. Let's forget about it. It's ridiculous. It always was. There never was any science behind it. There never was any biological plausibility. Here it is, right here in black and white, or red and white if you like. Boof. End of argument. Uh, secondly, we're also told that high-density lipoprotein, or HDL, is protective, is good cholesterol. In which case, what would we see? We'd see a negative relationship where, starting at the left-hand side of the graph, um, there would be uh, very few uh, participants, and then as we move on, the, the relationship would be like the lower the HDL, the more at risk we would be. So we would start with more cases at the left and less cases at the right is what I'm trying to say. So there'd be a negative slope opposite to the so-called bad LDL slope. And are we going to see that? Well, I've kind of telegraphed it, of course not. What we see here, again, is a normal distribution. Okay, So we cannot say either that LDL is bad and neither can we say that HDL is good. This data refutes that information, blows it out of the water. The observation does not meet the hypothesis. The hypothesis must therefore be rejected. So we've got Bart using three graphs from the study to say bell curve though, therefore cholesterol hypothesis debunked. Now instead of just taking Bart's word for it, why don't we take a look over the study a bit more and get a better picture of these patients. Just before we do that, Let's establish that the general view, and the view that I hold, is that cholesterol level is a key component in atherosclerosis development, but that other factors like diabetes, smoking, high blood pressure, and lack of exercise can help accelerate it as well. So looking at the study population, I'll highlight five worrying stats. About 26% have diagnosed diabetes, 54% are listed to have high blood pressure, 54% also have HDL, the so-called good cholesterol, below the healthy level of 40 milligrams per deciliter. The average BMI is 28.9, which is very overweight and approaching obese. And the triglyceride average was 161, which is above the healthy level. So this isn't a healthy group we're looking at. Five stats that I've highlighted are criteria for something known as metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is a collection of factors which increase the likelihood of multiple diseases, including heart attack, stroke, and it can even affect your immunity. If your immunity is compromised and you're susceptible to frequent infections, you can find yourself with reduced cholesterol levels while having HDL cholesterol particles that now become atherogenic. The other thing to note is that HDL is a surrogate marker for general health. So it's not necessarily you have low HDL, therefore you become sick. It's a case of you're sick, therefore your HDL decreases. Let's have a look at some of the associations within the study. The table you're looking at gives us the association of LDL with different factors. What we find is that LDL was positively associated with acute coronary syndrome for these patients and more likely to be smokers. Whereas LDL was negatively associated with being a bit older, previous heart attacks, patients already on cholesterol lowering medications, patients with high blood pressure, patients with diabetes, patients with kidney problems. This might be why the authors didn't want to jump to conclusions based on bell curve graphs, because it kind of looks like the people in this group with lower LDL are people that have already been sick and were put on medications to try and reduce their risk of heart disease. I also just want to quickly address a study limitation of interest, the fact that fasting status was not noted. Uh, this is important because fasting can have a major effect on your cholesterol levels. For example, Here's a study in which the LDL cholesterol levels of individuals were dropped from around 120 mg per deciliter to around 85 to 90 mg per deciliter in just 10 weeks. I'm not saying that fasting had a major effect on the study that Bart provided, but it's a factor for consideration. Now, the authors came to the conclusion that their study showed that a target of LDL less than 70 mg per deciliter and a HDL greater than 60 mg per deciliter should be set as a goal. When we look at this table, there seems to be pretty strong reasoning. For every incremental increase of HDL down the LDL groups, there was significant reduction in the presentation of heart attack. Now, if they had run further controls on the different groups, we might get a better picture of dis different risks like we did with this table. But we don't have that info, and to jump to a conclusion based on a raw bell curve graph like Bart did just seems a little bit insane. 
but goes on to state that the authors gave an incorrect conclusion and that cholesterol levels are irrelevant to the outcome. He accuses them of coming to this conclusion because the study was funded by Big Pharma. And obviously, the only people who can combat the Big Pharma lizard Jew overlords are people like Bart, with the help of their tinfoil hats. Now, personally, I think it's best not to cherry pick individual graphs to come to conclusions while ignoring a whole lot of the contradicting information in the study and the mass of other evidence that has built up over the years. But hey, I'm a double condom kind of guy, and it looks like maybe the authors are too. Oh, lastly, I challenged Bart to a debate on the topic of cholesterol and heart disease, but he's turned it down because he'd prefer to debate a larger channel. He did say though that he'd like for me to present some sort of argument against him, and he might reconsider, so here's some of it. Anyway, see you guys later, and remember to keep making those low LDL, high HDL, and subscriber gains. Fuck off! Fuck off!